In this video, I suggest you learn how to paint borders. The border is a thin line that is painted in the finish between the frame and the inside of the icon. If you have the gold background, it is a good way to mark the distinction between the frame and the bottom. Also, we often come with an edging of the color on the side of the icon, which comes back slightly on the face of the icon. That's what we're going to see today. The first thing you need to do when painting a border is first to ensure that the support is sufficiently absorbent to be able to paint with a water-based paint. Especially on gold, it is advisable to put a small light glue. Here beef gall that you simply put pure. It's ox gall for gouache, the others don't work. You will obviously find the list of equipment on the associations page if you wish to have the exact references. So, this ox gall, you will put it as it is, overlapping the frame in the background. To be sure that you will be able to paint with water based paint between the two. That's it, just like that, you go to where you're going to. Paint the border, that's the first step. You let it dry for about 10 minutes, a quarter of an hour, it depends on the case. You can of course also put some on the paint itself, where you will draw the border on the outside of the frame, but in principle, if it is on paint, it is not necessary. So this is definitely the oxcal to use if you want to paint over gold, whether it's for edging, also for detailing and lettering or even to outline your painting, this is the first step. So, to paint the edges, you will need a slat that you can easily find in a DIY store. I took a slat 12mm thick by 18mm high, but it's a bit up to you. Depending on the width of the borders you want to make, to make them, use this kind of brush that has a good reserve, there's really no point in taking brushes that are too thin because you won't be able to draw long lines. The easiest way is to first practice on a sheet with your latte, take the paint you have chosen. Usually the edges are medium red or possibly off-white, but there are many possible variations. Load your brush with this paint, increasing the amount of egg yolk. Because you're going to have trouble glazing over it to rectify so you can put more binder than usual. The key to successful edging is, above all not to want to draw the line against the batten. What is important is to offset your brush by about 5 millimeters. And draw your line but therefore, not against the slat. Practice making several thinner or thicker strokes too. Get used to it. An important question is the viscosity of the paint. The paint must be thick enough to be quite opaque so that it covers immediately and if possible in a single stroke. However, the paint should not be so thick 
that it becomes too heavy and prevents you from drawing the line. It's up to you to practice and see what works best. Then you place your slat at the right distance. From where you want to draw your border, try to have a very stable position. Because once you start, it's difficult to change your position. If you have any doubts, start by making a very thin border. Then you can thicken it gradually. The ideal, of course, is to achieve a constant thickness. If you ever make a small mistake at the start, learn. To pick up a line where it started. With a little experience, you can paint long lengths the first time. Like here, I started a little too thin. So I'm going to go through it a second time to make it a little thicker. When it comes to large icons, rotate your icon depending on which side you want to draw the border on. With a little practice, this is a technique that is very effective. And that beautifully finishes the connection between the frame and the interior of the icon. It is important, of course, to have a stick that is at least the length of the icon, so... that when you have a hollow icon, the stick can be put on either side of the frame. To avoid touching painting inside, and here is the finished icon with its border. This is a result that you will probably find quite easy to obtain. It's a technique that you master as soon as you practice it a little. And which gives a rather flattering effect, maybe just a small detail. You notice that the border I made underneath, which separates the base from the inside of the frame icon, is always a little bit thicker. For me, it's visually useful because the contrasts are more powerful.